Hi folks, I'm Jennifer Sue, the product manager for Job Search and Cloud Count Solution. First, I want to thank you everyone for joining me this morning. And it looks like we have a full house. So it's um, really inspiring to see so many people engaged in diversity and inclusion. So before we get started, I want to let folks know that this session will be recorded and we'll share it shortly after. Um, we'll also save some time for Q&A at the end. And just a quick reminder, if you have questions throughout the session, just go into the Q&A link um, and there you can submit your questions. And we'll try to cover as many as we can, um, but we can, we'll also follow up after if we can't. So today we'll talk about how the definition of diversity is evolving. Along with the applications of machine learning when applied in the talent space can be biased. Then I'll share how we're helping businesses transform recruiting with Cloud Talent Solution and how we're helping to make jobs on career sites more discoverable and developing with inclusion as part of the design. And finally, I'm excited to have our customers here with us today. Smashfly and Cox Enterprise will talk about their own diversity and inclusion efforts and their experience with Cloud Talent Solution. Now let's get started. Diversity and inclusion is starting to gain momentum in the workplace. 78% of professionals and hiring managers said that diversity is a top trend impacting how they hire. The nudge comes from leadership, where 69% of CEOs rank diversity and inclusion as a top business priority. Leading companies that are working towards successfully towards um, inclusion have also achieved tangible financial benefits where gender diverse executive teams are 21% more likely to experience above average profitability. And it's not just gender. They had similar findings with ethnic and cultural diversity. So it's not only the right thing to do, but it's also good for business. While there is still a lot of work to be done in terms of demographic representation, the definition of diversity is evolving expanding beyond the traditional gender or ethnicity to include the many other dimensions that make us who we are, such as our age, whether or not we are a caretaker, or perhaps a veteran. And blend this with cognitive diversity, which includes our personalities and our thinking styles. This is because the two work in tandem. Cognitive diversity brings the mental frameworks that uh, people use to help solve problems. And demographic diversity taps into that knowledge and elicit cognitive diversity through its indirect effect on personal behavior. Think about the last time you had a great brainstorming session with your team and how different everyone was. As a product manager, my favorite moments were seeing the conversations between our ontologist who studied gene therapy and a lead engineer who worked on quantum computing, or our marketing lead who researched education with a designer who was previously an optometrist. My team is also made up of veterans, millennials to Gen X and Z, and caretakers. New ideas come from my diverse way of thinking. When high-performing teams are both demographically and cognitively diverse, there's a 20% increase in creativity and in innovation. I'm sure you all have heard a lot about the digital transformation these past few days. The key to the digital transformation starts with the workforce and having the right talent. AI can help transform businesses through recruiting to help discover new jobs and a more representative candidate pipeline. But the recruiting space is riddled with complex and messy data. Take, for example, nurses. There are hundreds of different nurse titles and hundreds of different certifications. And that's because nurses also have specialties within departments, such as the ICU that contains surgical, pediatric, or neurotrauma nurses, just to name a few. So when job descriptions are vague, such as nurse, and doesn't include the department, or cases when it says, or equivalent experience. The process is time consuming and frustrating. 
similar to how you can find a lot of software engineering jobs, but the details matter between mobile iOS and Android, or programming languages such as Java or Python. For years, employers have used systems to um, help fill job openings, but the methods were often crude. A computer would identify keywords on job descriptions, then determine whether or not those exact keywords are present on a resume. Here are some of the challenges in developing a model in recruiting for a nurse. On the resume is a job title for an OBGYN, and on the job posting, it's an LDRP nurse. There wasn't a match because the keywords were not exactly the same, even though they're synonymous. This is because at some hospitals, an LDRP nurse stands for Labor, Delivery, Recovery, and Postpartum Nurse, which is similar to an OBGYN nurse. Next, it's difficult to track all the possible accredited colleges, the various spellings and abbreviations, and what counts as or equivalent. And the same can be applied for licenses. Lastly, the job posting requires an advanced cardiovascular life support certification. There was no match because it's not listed on the resume. But most nurses and recruiters know that employers provide this training for free if you don't have it or need a refresher. And these are just a few examples where there's room for improvement. As you're all aware, it's important to think about bias when using machine learning in hiring. The common issues stem from four areas. Unclear use cases, where there's too much focus on the solution instead of the problem. So before digging into the various models, take a human-centered approach and establish a clear use case first. Misaligned expectations, where there's a tendency to just throw everything at a model and just let it figure it out. Small data sets, where there isn't enough training data to learn all the various patterns. So make sure you have a lot of relevant data. And bias data. So spend time examining the training data for bias. For the leaders in our audience, these are important considerations when deciding on developing in-house or evaluating technology providers. Now let's go through how to apply these methods in recruiting. Here's an example of a nurse job search query. Based on the data, there's a need for identifying 12-hour shifts and narrowing location radius to five miles. But we only know half the story of what they're looking for and not why. After speaking to users, we learned that the assumptions based on just the data were misleading. When nurses look for jobs, it's in terms of shifts, where longer shifts also implies fewer days. This nurse was actually looking for a part-time job that's only two days a week, and not a 60-hour-per-week job that pays overtime, and a need to commute by bike and not necessarily within five miles. By taking a human-centered approach and speaking to users, we can understand why and develop the right solutions that addresses their needs, and then we can revisit and understand if we're looking at the right data. Now, let's look at something more complex, where the use case is screening a resume. Here, the job description asks for an RN. With a bachelor's degree in nursing and provides emotional care to patients. We reason that education information would satisfy the education requirement. As for emotional care, it requires the ability to empathize and communicate. Volunteer work is probably a strong signal for empathy. As for good communication skills, recent studies show that multilingual people have better communication skills. and you probably didn't need to know that they're female. So our hypothesis is volunteer work and languages are features that can predict the ability to provide emotional care. And by developing a hypothesis, it helps identify reasonable features to begin with and iterate on, along with the ability to detect if the necessary data is missing 
not to mention it also aims towards a less complex solution. And this makes it easier to debug and improve on the model. Machine learning models require a lot of relevant data. How much is a lot? That depends on the problem, but the more data typically Im improves your model. A good rule of thumb is to have at least thousands of examples for a basic linear model and hundreds of thousands for a neural network. For example, in terms of nursing jobs, we'll need, we'll need at least thousands of labeled examples for both the positive and negative cases. So this means thousands of nurses that can provide emotional care and thousands that can't. And across all of the different types of nurses, so if there are 10 different types, then we're looking at at least 20,000 examples for a basic linear model. And if a neural network is needed, then the order of magnitude is in the millions. So if you have less data, consider finding a partner that can bring the necessary data scale needed. Now, before we go into examining the data, if everyone in the audience can imagine a shoe. Now raise your hand if you imagine sneakers. Okay, high heels. High tops, anyone? High tops? No. <laughs> um, given that majority raise their hands to sneakers, we've immediately introduced a bias. And to add more complexity, what color were they? Here are four types of bias. Something that impacts all data collected is reporting bias. Reporting bias occurs when people annotate the frequency of things that doesn't reflect the real world frequency, but things that they found interesting or worth noting. And this is, so for this example, for our sneakers, you may not know that sneakers have rubber soles when relying on the top text frequency. And this is because rubber soles is ordinary and can go without saying. Sampling bias, where the data source is not representative of all the different variants. For our shoes, we only had those that were typical to us. But we were missing oxfords, sandals, or rain boots. Latent bias, when the model is only shown a specific example. So if the historical data only contained sneakers, then it would be biased towards sneakers and would not label high heels correctly. And interaction bias, that occurs by the way in which users interact with it. So in this room, if everyone kept selecting sneakers in a game, then the model will learn from the activity and be biased towards sneakers. And these are just a few out of more than 100 types of different human biases that may occur in, hum in uh, machine learning data sets. So make sure to examine your data and audit it for any human um, biases that may skew your model's predictions. By using a human-centered approach, you can establish a clear use case by speaking to users to focus on the problem and then to develop a hypothesis to determine what features and data are necessary. And make sure you have a lot of data. In recruiting, it's hard to have a lot of labeled data in hiring data, which is especially difficult across every single occupation. Lastly, examine the data. Machine learning models will reflect the data that they're trained on, so analyze your data carefully to ensure you understand it. And for our leaders in the audience, a lot of relevant data is necessary. So if you don't have enough data, consider finding a provider that can bring the necessary data scale and develop AI with care. Our team is using AI to enhance and expand what's possible in recruiting, which is a critical function of each and every growing business. Now I'll go over what we've built in CloudTown Solution to transform the job search experience. In job search, sometimes the results don't match the job seeker's intent. In turn, that misunderstanding causes hours of work to find the right job, while others give up and look somewhere else. 
This is a huge inefficiency that I'm sure frustrates not just the job seeker, but businesses as well. Because businesses spend a lot of effort to get traffic on their sites, but may lose the candidates before they even see the job. Here's an example of a job search for nurse assistant, which is someone who supports and helps nurses. There are 114 results, but it turns out many of these jobs are not even for the right role. The top result, the top four results actually, are for nurses and not the assistant. The first job is an administrative nurse. The second is a senior nurse that's an instructor. And the fourth result is a nurse practitioner that requires a master's degree in nursing. To help solve these problems, we developed CloudCount Solution. CloudCount Solution is a set of APIs and using machine learning to better understand job content and job seeker intent. Candidates get matched to their ideal jobs faster and employers attract and convert higher quality candidates by showing more relevant results. At the core is a neural network to understand jobs, companies, skills, and education. You can think of it as a two-sided matching engine that takes in the job seeker's intent and employer job openings and runs them through a set of algorithms to determine if there's a match or not. It's all about understanding the semantics around people and the semantics around jobs and using the power of machine learning to make the best matches possible. Here's an example of how Cloud Talent Solution understands a job seeker's query. Let's start unpacking this. Part-time CNA WA Australia. Part-time is an employment type. CNA is an acronym for the job title Certified Nursing Assistant. This means the person's looking for all job content related to the occupation. That includes nurse aid and patient care assistant. WA Australia is a region and acronym for Western Australia. This includes much of the outback, but also contains Perth and all the way to Broome, a port city in the north. All these signals are important to consider when um, capturing a job seeker's query to understand the intent and return all relevant jobs. Underneath the hood of many of the features and functionalities of Cloud Talent Solutions sits machine learning. We developed models specifically for the recruiting domain from heuristic to neural networks that helps classify jobs so that businesses can leverage facets in their UI or semantics so that um, to match the different languages that employers and job seekers speak, such as the LDRP and the OBGYN nurse. Here, using TensorFlow, we're able to visualize text embeddings of job titles. Text embeddings are co-occurrences of terms represented in a vector. Words and phrases that appear similar in context within employment-related data are trained to be close in the embedding space. The resulting dense representation allow us to train deep neural networks that takes jobs as input. For example, in the visual is a cluster of nurses where the different nurse terms are close in proximity, such as the LPN, which stands for a licensed practical nurse, and the school nurse. And terms that are further away, such as the medical technician, are less similar. My team is actively working to improve inclusion by taking a human-centered approach. By using design and AI to reduce repetitive tasks and free people to focus on what humans do best, they build relationships and solve problems. For job search, this means we engage a diverse set of job seekers across different dimensions, such as occupations, gender, or career stages, from entry level to those nearing retirement. This helps us understand the different use case scenarios and build a rich variety of user perspectives. We're also working on improving inclusion in our tr model training procedures, such as detecting and measuring bias and diversifying our data. Ultimately, we think AI will have the greatest impact when everyone can access it and when it's built with everyone's benefit in mind.
Over the past few years, our team has spent time with hundreds of people to understand their job search journey. I met a woman who was blind, and as we were searching for jobs across various sites, we came across a company that she was interested in. But we realized that the job detail page was not accessible, even though the rest of the site was. While I could read the job description to her, she told me not to bother. Because the career site is her first impression of a career at that company. And if that isn't accessible, then what would it be like on a daily basis working there? Job search is one of the first impressions a candidate has with a business. So it's important to make jobs on your career site more discoverable to a larger group of candidates and make the experience more inclusive. Now I'll go over a few features we've developed to help businesses reach more demographically and cognitively diverse candidates. Each year, over a quarter of a million over a quarter of a million service members transition from the US military to the civilian world. We've spoken to many service members, and it turns out the language used to describe the military service and civilian employment is not always similar. Many transitioning service members need a way to translate their experience so that they don't miss out on great opportunities and businesses don't miss out on great candidates. We also learned that in the US military, occupational codes are used to identify specific jobs. To assist service members transitioning to the civilian world, we've added military codes to our understanding of occupations to surface the relevant civilian jobs. We're thrilled to have Recruit Military in the audience today. Hey, Mike. <laughs> they are a veteran recruiting company in the US that represents over a million veterans. Since implementing CloudTalent Solution on their job board, they've seen record highs of almost twice as many applications. And we're proud to help them with their mission to connect more veterans to connect more transitioning veterans to their first civilian job. Another example is our global language support in our service that leverages the tight integration with Google Translate Neuro Machine Translations. Back in the old days, traditional phrase-based translation systems perform their task by breaking up sentences into multiple chunks and then translate them phrase by phrase. This led to a disfluency in the translation outputs and was not quite like how we humans translate. We read the whole sentence, understand its meaning, and then translate it. Neuromachine translation mimics that. Here's an example. Asistiente de enfermería certificado. Neuromachine translations considers the entire input sentence as a unit of translation. So instead of assistant nursing certified, we're able to translate and return certified nursing assistant jobs. We also learned that across the US in major metropolitan areas, over 100 different languages are spoken at home. And in Europe, a large portion of Europeans frequently search online in their first language. A few weeks ago, we announced an exciting new feature for those who prefer to search in their first language, we also return the relevant jobs that were posted in English so that these job seekers don't miss out on jobs that they would have otherwise missed. And finally, commuting is one of the top considerations for a job, where 85% of US professionals would take a pay cut for a shorter commute. Our commute search feature surfaces jobs based on commute time and transportation modes. As you can imagine, to determine the shortest commute time, you'll have to identify all the relevant different route options between two points to answer queries. These permutations become costly as the scale of the problem increases from one metropolitan area to an entire country or continent, where 10,000 stops already yields 100 million pairs. We leveraged a tight integration with Google Maps to gather this information, layering in our knowledge of jobs, where we've mapped millions of jobs 
and develop the technology to answer all of these commute time queries on the fly. As part of our research in speaking to a broad base of users, we learned that some people need alternative commute methods, especially those living in low-income communities or the nurse that was searching for a job um, within biking distance. Recently, we announced new commute methods so that everyone can find work no matter how they choose to get there. Overall, our clients are seeing great results that include reduced development time that saves them at least an entire sprint each year on their roadmap and double digit gains in their key performance metrics such as applications and an increase in higher quality candidates. Now let's hear directly from customers about their diversity goals, experience with their in recent integration with Cloud Talent Solution, and how they're leveraging inclusive features. Today we have Tom Kenny, the CEO of Smashfly, and Tom brings over 20 years of leadership experience in high growth companies. We also have Adam Glassman, the Senior Manager of Employment Branding at Cox Enterprise, and has experience in marketing, branding, and talent acquisition. Please welcome them onto the stage. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we're really excited about Smashfly's recent integration with Cloud Talent Solution and how we've been able to showcase some of our inclusive features on Cox Enterprise's career site. Adam, can you tell us a bit about yourself and Cox Enterprise and share your perspective on the candidate experience? Sure, absolutely. Good morning, everybody. My name is Adam Glassman, and as Jen mentioned, I lead the employment brand and recruitment marketing team at Cox Enterprises. So who is Cox Enterprises? Well, we are one of the top privately held companies in the country, but also one of the country's best kept secrets. We're a $20 billion organization whose three primary business divisions include Cox Communications, Cox Automotive, and Cox Media Group. And under those divisions, there are brands that you know like Auto Trader, Kelly Blue Book, and Blueprint RF. Our technology and software teams are really at the forefront of disrupting a majority of these industries. Uh, and it's really a great time to be part of the team simply because of that. Uh, across the globe, we're 60,000 employees strong, all focused on one primary thing, and that's to build a better future for the next generation. And we do that through a number of different ways, uh, both for our employees, our communities, our industries, and our planet. Um, to your second question, Jen, about uh, the candidate experience, um, it may actually come as a shock to those in the room, but most people find searching for a job <coughs> somewhat frustrating. Uh, and it can be a very difficult process, um, and they don't have recruiters hounding them and uh, stalking them online like I'm sure most of you do. Uh, for most members who are looking for a new job, the onus is really on them to look for a new company, to find a match, uh, both from a culture perspective, a location perspective, and a brand perspective. Um, and to find that right opportunity at the right time. And so they take a lot of time researching and there are a number of different sites that they visit to do that, uh, including a company career site. And so as they go through their research phase and their process, that, um, that experience can somewhat feel a little clunky to them, uh, especially at the point where they're ready to apply. Um, most companies ask individuals to apply online today and many of them don't even apply, uh, don't even allow that application to be mobile friendly. Uh, so there's another point of contention for candidates. If you are actually applying on a desktop, the application can still feel very clunky. It feels outdated. Uh, it's long and laborious. And so there is continued frustration through that process. Once you actually apply, you tend to wait. And you wait some more, and ultimately, if your background meets what the company's looking for, you hear back from a recruiter and that starts you down the path of uh, potentially several rounds of interviews, um, which again can feel a little laborious depending on the company. Uh, I will say across our industry, there is a, a renewed sense of uh, focus on creating a better candidate experience, and so that gives me some optimism for the future of how we can improve that experience, and I think technology and AI can be avenues for us to do that. Thanks, Adam. It's great to be partnering with you and to help improve the candidate experience. 
Tom, could you share a bit about Smashfly and how AI can help transform recruiting for your enterprise clients? Sure. Thanks for having me this morning. I apologize for the glare a little bit for those of you who are seeing the bright lights. Uh, it is actual baldness. It's not fake. So, you know, Smashfly is a, a company that was founded about 12 years ago. And it was founded with the purpose to really connect the right talent with the right hiring managers at the right time. It's a very simple prospect. But when you think about the complexity of how people look for jobs, how jobs are posted, where jobs are posted, and with what Jen was showing earlier, all the different ways that employers are using language and using colors and styles to try to attract talent, there's no one single best way. And when Smashfly really started to take a look at this and the technology a few years ago, we recognized there was a huge opportunity for us to leverage some of the AI and ML techniques to learn how talent is engaging with employers, but then also how employers are engaging with talent. So when we think about it, Smashfly is in 69 countries around the world where we have recruiters working. And we have talent that interface with us in over 180 countries around the world. And if you think about the microclimates of recruiting that that represents, it's almost infinite in the number of complications with the way people would interface together, the employers and the talent. So when we think about especially the machine learning aspects, there's tons of data available. And you ask any data scientist or machine learning person, and they're going to tell you the two most important things that they need are data, lots of it, but data that's good. You know, Jen talked about the training data sets, and we looked at the training data sets that we would have and the value that it brought. So we're leveraging the AI and ML techniques to really use that amount of voluminous information that we have, 1.2 million hires that we've done through the Smashfly platform, and really move those forward in a way that engages talent, engages them in a way that gets them excited about an employer. It's not just about Cox. You don't just know Cox Communication as your cable company. You know, I was talking to Adam earlier, and he's got this whole automotive division, which was really crazy. And then print and web media, radio media. It's a huge conglomerate organization. Well, how does Smashfly help Cox with that? It's like we really try to move that emotive action. You know, how do you create that connection with the employer? And there's no way to do this in a human function. You know, we could have hundreds of people looking at these job postings, looking at the way people are tracking, looking at reports, but they're not going to be doing a good enough job for us because we need to be moving faster. We need to be looking in places that we never thought to look before. So the AI and ML constructs are really what's going to move that forward. And if you think about it, one of the things that we're really trying to do, because it's that emotive response that we want, we're not trying to eliminate the human. We actually have a, a customer of ours, global company, great company, very recognizable brand name. They took a year to build a system that would use machine learning, deep learning, neural networks, and they were going to create a process by which they were going to find the best candidates that existed out there. And they put the system in place. They spent millions of dollars building it. And six months after they put it in place, they realized 50% fewer people were accepting their job offers. And the reason was they'd eliminated the human element completely. So when we think about it at Smashfly, you know, all the great technology that's out there, it's not about replacing the human element. It's about augmenting what humans naturally do, what they do best. So help the talent, find the human that's trying to hire them, and get to those outcomes much faster. Thanks, Tom. We're excited to bring AI with the human-centered approach to um, your ta client's talent acquisition process. Now, I'd love to hear from you both about the importance of responsible AI and inclusive hiring practices. Tom, would you like to start with why this is important to Smashfly and to your customers? Everything about bias in human resources and in recruiting is one of the biggest topics we have today. How do you create that inclusive environment? How do you create diversity? And if anybody watched the news this morning, Gizmodo posted something that Congress has introduced a bill that will require companies that do AI to document how it is eliminating bias. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty big step because now we're recognizing the power of AI and the power of machine learning, and now you've got people worried about it and starting to regulate it. Whether that's good or bad is indifferent, but it really raises the level of awareness about how diversity, inclusion, and bias works in systems. You know, there's a, a, a great company out there, Intel, where their CEO a few years ago said, we want to create a diverse workforce that exceeds the standards across the board. 
You know, if the standard in our industry is 30% women engineers, we want to do that. If the standard across the industry is 50% African American, we want to do that. So not creating some pie in the sky numbers, but creating something that says the industry standards are this, and we're not there. And the Forbes articles that you read about this are just fascinating. The CEO created a big, hairy, audacious goal. Anybody who's read Cotter from Harvard knows the BHAG is a way to really inspire people and get them to move to a goal. And they set the goal for 2020, but they achieved it long before that. And so when we think about it, working with Cox and working with other customers that we have, they want the diverse and inclusive workforces. They bring different skill sets. You know, I don't know how many of you would think that my first career was as an opera singer. You know, I had a great time. I sang in seven different languages, sang in Europe, sang in the US, had a really great time. Had a tumor in my throat, ended my opera career. Technology was a cool thing at the time in the 90s, so I thought, what the heck, I'll do that. But it's one of those things where I think about things a little bit differently than maybe a classically trained engineer would. And that just little bit of diversity with me adds some color to the employee base. And when we leverage tools, especially the Google search that we put in place for Cox, we're leveraging a way that we're trying to create that diverse and that inclusive environment in ways that we don't want the humans just to make that judgment call. Because even if you make a judgment call about diversity, you're still using your inherent bias to make that judgment call. So let's build systems and processes that actually empower the human engagement in a way that we develop these inclusive relationships with people, a diverse workforce, an inclusive workforce is one that actually transforms industries. We see this research everywhere. And our ability to provide that to our customers is one of the most important things that we can do at Smashfly. Great, thank you, Tom. We're excited to share this vision with you. Adam, if you can speak more on this topic as an enterprise customer of the technology, what does in hire, inclusive hiring mean to Cox as a hiring company and as a business? Sure, so the important thing to understand about Cox is that diversity and inclusion are not buzzwords. It's not PR, it's not publicity. It really is a core foundational value within the company. And it's been held since its very inception 120 years ago. And because it is a core foundational value for us, we act with intention to try to make the workplace as inclusive as possible. And that takes several different phases if you think about the journey that somebody would take at the very early point of connecting with a brand and applying for a position. It's that career site uh, experience as well that Jen had talked about with accessibility and making sure that their search is connecting in the way that is good for them. It's the language we use on our job descriptions. It's the way a recruiter evaluates talent and recommends them to a hiring manager. It's the way a hiring manager evaluates talent to ultimately make the offer for someone to join the company. It's the way an employee experiences their work within the company. And so at Cox, we have um, steps along these different journey paths to make sure that we are providing the most inclusive area as possible. We know that um, as a business, we want to have those diverse ideas and those diverse perspectives and those backgrounds. Number one, it's the right thing to do. But number two, it does make our business stronger. Um, from, a, from a cultural perspective, um, that is something that we act with intention on. And then um, we know that employees, when they feel warm and welcomed in an organization and they can feel comfortable in their own skin, they perform at a high level and they can do amazing things. Um, at Cox, we do have um, gender diversity at the executive level, which I'm proud to say. Of our four divisions, we have uh, chief human resource officers at each of them and all four of them are female. Um, across the board, we've been recognized by a number of different diversity organizations for our efforts, including the Human Rights Campaign, Forbes, Diversity Inc., among others. Great, thank you, Adam. It's really inspiring to hear about Cox's diversity and inclusion values. Um, now I'd like to hear from you both about why you were excited about our recent integration and the inclusive features, such as the veterans job search, um, the multilingual support and commute search. Tom, would you like to start? So one of the biggest things for us when we were looking at the Google search was what do we buy and what do we build? 
And when we looked at our implementation, it was obvious to us that when you talk about natural language processing, you talk about semantic analysis, you talk about just search in general, I mean, Google's the world leader in that space. So when we thought about how do we develop a better search capability for these jobs, it was a clear cut answer for us to partner with Google on this. And when you look at our base of customers, you know, like I mentioned earlier, 69 countries we have recruiters working in, the ability to leverage the multilingual capabilities is huge for us, and it's huge for our customers. To be able to say very, very simply, I need to find a job with the language that I'm most comfortable in, maybe with a second language shown to me that I'm also comfortable in, in multilingual societies, and be able to create that connection very, very quickly. And when you think about it, even from the most simplest things, the user experience, today with most search systems, you can say, I want to find an engineering job. Well, if you put in software engineer, and it's a basic Boolean and or construct, you're going to end up with job postings with product people and marketing people and salespeople, because they're all going to say, has to work well with engineers if you're a technology company. So you're going to get all these jobs come up, because it's not smart enough to really understand it. And if you do it just by job title, then if you put engineer in that search, you're going to miss all the jobs that are listed as software developer. So it's not really going to help you. You know, one of the things that we saw with Google was the ability to say, well, I'm looking for an engineer position. And you type it in with E-N-G-I-N-E-R. You misspell it. Well, guess what? You still get the, the relevant engineer positions that still come up. But one of the bigger things that we saw, you know, it's near and dear to my heart, the military occupational specialty codes and the ability to search for that. Now, I've been a part-time military guy for 23 years now. I'm still an executive officer of an airborne battalion in New Jersey. And I know how hard it is, not just for people that are transitioning from active duty, but people who are reservists who have spent years trying to build up some skills in the Army Reserve that they don't know how to translate into the civilian world. And a lot of these guys struggle, especially I mean, the, since 2003, I was deployed for about four and a half years, up to about 2014. And those are tough deployments, and those are tough things to come home to. And you don't always know how to make that transition. Even if you're a part-time person and you go away for 15 months and you come back, your job's gone, or your wife's gone, or there's a challenge in your life and you've got to find that next opportunity. Well, helping people translate that into a real valuable job prospectus is hugely important for the veterans community. And it was interesting, last night we were walking back from dinner, and I was walking down the streets of San Francisco. And I was thinking about this inclusion and diversity and what am I gonna talk about? And it was interesting because I noticed as I walked, probably 10, 15% of the folks that I saw on the side of the street, they're wearing a jacket from the Gulf War in the 90s, they're wearing a jacket from the early days of the wars in Iraq or Afghanistan, or a recent jacket, because if you're a military person, you actually know the different uniforms that have been issued. And you know by the uniform what time period that uniform was designed for. And I had to think to myself, you know, we've done 1.2 million jobs for people around the world. How many of those people that are on the street are veterans? And how many of those people, if we knew how to reach them, and we could give them the capability to find that right next opportunity, how many of them would still be on the street? And how many of them could we help lead really productive lives and be a part of our society? Because that's what diversity and inclusion is all about. It's about finding the right opportunities for the right people and the right companies and giving them something to be proud about every single day. Yeah, I agree with everything that you said, Tom. Two additional features that I know I've been impressed with are the commute search and the multi-language capabilities. So if you start with the commute search, um, one of my jobs in employment brand is to tell a very real, authentic story of who we are as a company and match that with what the candidate is looking for. So we're not trying to oversell, we're trying to actually tell a real story so that the candidate is more informed and they ultimately accept a job at a company that they're looking for. From a commute perspective, look, let's be honest, in the majority of our cities, traffic stinks. And so who wants to sit for two hours in rush hour traffic going back and forth to a job, most people are looking for a very specific commute time. And we can't always change where our office locations are and we don't always have remote work and work from home opportunities. So that commute search is a very important factor in what people are looking for in a career 
and in a job because the worst scenario for us is that somebody would ultimately accept a job and they were really looking for a 15 minute commute but it turns out it's two hours and two months down the road they're miserable and they quit and that doesn't help anybody it, it you have to start the process all over again on both sides so that's the worst case scenario for us and i think the commute search is another one of those features that'll help improve the experience and bring that information right into the candidate's fingertips. Uh, the second piece is the multi-language capabilities. And so Jen talked a little bit about that earlier, but if we looked at five random companies in the country and they had the same five positions, I'd bet you dollars to donuts that they'd all t title them differently. So five companies with the same five jobs, they'd all have different titles on them. And so that's in the same language. Now imagine if you don't speak that language natively. We know that translating isn't always one-to-one. -one. The grammar's different, the syntax is different. And so if you're trying to search in your native language, which isn't necessarily the native language that the company has posted in, good luck trying to find that job match. And so this is another one of those features that puts the information at the candidate's fingertips to help improve the experience. So I'm excited about both of those. Adam, Tom, thank you both for joining us today. We're excited to um, be working alongside with you to, to connect more candidates with jobs. Please give them a round of applause to Adam and Tom. Thank you. So you've heard how AI can help with inclusive hiring and how critical it is to get this right for our customers. Now I'll run through a few takeaways and then we can get to your questions. To wrap up, the definition of diversity is evolving to be more inclusive. And it's not only the right thing to do, but it's also good for business. AI can transform recruiting, but applying AI to, to recruiting has its risk and needs to be handled with care. By using a human-centered approach and speaking to users, you can establish a clear use case and develop a hypothesis to determine what features and data are necessary then ensure you have a lot of relevant data and examine that data. If you're considering recruitment technology, ensure your providers can bring the necessary data scale and develop AI with care. Cloud Talent Solution is transforming recruiting with AI and inclusive features, and we're seeing positive results. <coughs> Lastly, it's important to remember as creators or influencers of technology it's our responsibility to develop with inclusion as part of the design. Thank you.